Well, here we are. We're going to talk a little bit about redox and single replacement reactions. Turns out, single replacement reactions are redox reactions. First year chemistry, we call it single replacement. And then later on, we find out it's really redox. Hmm, can add some confusion when students go off to college. I've gotten here some magnesium. Now, I always ask my students, what color is magnesium? And the sad thing is, they go, how are we supposed to know what color magnesium is? I tell them, well, look on the periodic table, so find magnesium. And it's a metal, all right? So what color are metals? How are we supposed to know that? It wasn't in the book. No, no, from real life. A metal, what color is it? And then finally, some, is it silver? Yeah, yeah, it's silver. It's probably silver. There's only two metals that I can think of offhand that aren't silver. Um, let's see, one of them is... Uh, gold. Gold. And then I ask if you have any examples, you want to give me some, I'll take some. And the other one, of course, is copper. And there, there may be some others, but I don't know of any offhand. Do you know of any other ones? Mm, no. No, not offhand. So this is magnesium, and Bob's going to do something with magnesium here. We're going to have a this oxidation yeah. reduction reaction. This first one really is, I'm going to need your torch, sir. This, is this a first one's one of the most common things I think that we do in high school chemistry and, and show our students. Combustion reaction to show them an active metal, to show them metals burn, which is really kind of a, an odd thing for them. Uh, it's a simple way to show not a single replacement reaction in this case, but what most books call what synthesis or something. Synthesis, like. yeah, which is a, also a redox reaction. A redox reaction. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm going to have Lee ignite this piece of magnesium. You shouldn't stare directly at it unless you want to be blinded. So I'm going to take my student containment device. Ignite that. And as you can see, there's a little bit of white smoke being given off. You could turn on the fan briefly. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, <laughs> stop it. And that white and smoke is? That white smoke is the product, which in this case is a metal oxide, magnesium oxide. And you can see the white powder on the end of the uh, tongs as well. And that's, that's kind of interesting. Now. This is an active metal, and we use that term all the time. Magnesium is an active metal. Zinc is an active metal. What does that really mean? It means that chemically they are very vigorous. They react with lots of different things. Sort of a discrepant event for you students is to think about what would happen if you put this in some other medium besides air. Why not use a different gas? What's going to happen if I put magnesium, burning magnesium in, say, carbon, carbon dioxide. dioxide. And you can see inside the flask, I've got a little bit of dry ice sitting down on the bottom. And I'm going to ignite another piece of magnesium. And this time, I'm going to put it down inside this flask, which is filled with carbon dioxide gas, I hope. And we'll see what happens. So this could be sublime. The expectation would be that it'll probably go out. OK, you ready? Instead, did you hear that? Did you catch that little pop, 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 pop right at the end? It didn't actually go out. And in fact, look at, the, look at this now. Is it all white? No, Bob, I see a little bit of black there, right there on the this end. a little bit of black on that. In fact, and if you really looked closely when we did this, flip the fan on for just a second. Again, you can see that white powder. You can see it being pulled out of the top. White powder, of course, is mang magnesium oxide again. The black stuff that was generated is the other part of the equation, which is carbon. Magnesium is so active that when you stick it into carbon dioxide, it will react with the carbon dioxide and take away the oxygen from the CO2. Pull it out, make magnesium oxide, and leave the carbon behind. 
And that, that's really pretty, pretty interesting, and it makes you wonder about carbon dioxide fire extinguishers and how valuable they would be. In, in this case, yeah. Now, it's, it's interesting that this is a, uh, simply a synthesis reaction or combination reaction, depends whose textbook you're using, but it is redox. This is a single replacement, but it is redox. If your kids go off to college, they generally don't talk about single replacement, double replacement, uh, uh, decomposition and composition. They talk about, is it redox? Is it precipitate? Or uh, is it an acid-base reaction, perhaps? Um, they like to what I call RAP, R-A-P, redox, acid base, and precipitate, as opposed to this stuff. I've always found that interesting that we teach that, yet when they go off to college, the first course they hit, they never really talk about that. All right, so we're going to do the same reaction with zinc and carbon dioxide, but this time I'm going to try to put out the fire with some solid carbon dioxide that I have right here, some dry ice. And you can get this at uh, Baskin Robbins. Did you mean Robbins. zinc, Mr. Merrick, or did you mean magnesium? Did I, what did I say? I think you said zinc. Oh, zinc. Yeah, zinc would be a little harder to do in this case. I mean magnesium. That's why Bob is here. Now, I've got this solid block of dry ice, and you want the two to lie pretty flat. And then you want to take this device right here. You may own these. This is a test tube borer, and it may actually work. The problem is that at a lot of schools, people do this on a slate countertop, and within a couple of weeks or a couple of times of using these, they've bored holes through the stopper they're trying to do, but they hit that slate or uh, hard countertop, and this thing is dull. So these are brand new, so they're going to work perfectly. And all I'm going to do is put a little hole in here, and you don't need a test tube borer. You can use a screwdriver. It's just a test tube borer works well. Okay. Now let me put this away. And let me get out some magnesium turnings, which I would use. I would not use magnesium ribbon. Now, I'm going to put some in there. Don't go crazy with this because it could be splattering all over you. Hot, burning magnesium at 1,000 or more degrees. So that's probably a good amount. Now, we do want a safety shield in front of your students. So, Bob, there's, again, there's how many of us? Two. Well, two, I think, yeah. Let's put it on the other Counting side. Me. Yeah, let's put it on the other side. That's what right. the heck. All right. So, here we go. Now Always we protect your teacher. That's correct. Eh, maybe not. <laughs> so, we're going to put this on here. If you want to create interest, if, you got, if you're dumping hot water in a beaker, anything. Bring out explosion the safety shield, shield. Out. and put on your protector. Yeah. So they'll like that. Now I'm going to ignite the magnesium and I'm going to attempt to put it out. Now, here we go. And we can get the lights down a bit. That would be cool. Oh my God, I've got a fire! 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 All right, so we're going to cover that up. So we've got something at minus 70-some degrees, below zero, the dry ice, yet we've got something burning in there at several thousand degrees because it's giving off that white flame. Now, don't go picking it up too early in the game because there could be some hot magnesium flopping around in there and shooting out. You could probably pick it up about now. All right, so let's... Let that cool down for a moment, and then we're going to take a look at the product that's inside there. I would ask the students to do this. It's important to try to get them involved and to think about what is the product. So we can take this splash shield away, or this safety shield. And if we open this up, and we look at it, we see the white powder that we saw earlier with this, and then if we poke at it, we see the carbon that's also left behind. Okay, and I tend to keep one of these that's intact, and I have it in a Petri dish that's covered, and I can pass it around the room so they can see the products firsthand instead of looking from the back of the room, those that are sleeping, I mean those that are sitting back there. Now, 
It is kind of nice to actually have the kids have a clue that metals do burn. In Chicago, maybe five, ten years ago, there was a warehouse that had about 3,000 pounds of scrap magnesium. And it was a day like yesterday, and the roof leaked. But one of the employees got a good idea. I got to dry this stuff before the owner comes. So he took a propane torch and attempted to dry the 3,000 pounds of magnesium, or at least part of it. It caught fire. That was a fairly spectacular demonstration. On a little larger level, I had maybe three, four grams here. They had 3,000 pounds of it. Uh, they, the video clips I saw from the top of the Sears Tower, which in the fire was about 10 miles away, you could see the building exploding. And then when they attempted to put water on it, that just fed the fire because it sucked the oxygen right out of the water. The proper way to do it, well, you have to put water on it if a building's burning because the rest of the building's on fire. But the proper way, apparently, if there's a large magnesium fire is to put, not sand, because it'll even suck the oxygen out of sand. Right, Bob? It will indeed. The proper way is to use something like sodium chloride. Well, you know, you're not going to put dump tons of sodium chloride onto some burning building, so the firemen were forced to use water.